saw him uh, with the Steve Weiberger at uh, Dragon's Lair, and that day he looked considerably better than here. I, I, I promise you. Bigger, fuller, stride and everything. And conditioning-wise, uh, I think he was better in the gym. Listen, dude, if they come after you, that's your problem. Not ours. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, so we're back. Cutler Cast, episode 45. Uh, we have a lot to cover today since we just got back from the UK last night. Milos, welcome, man. Good to have you. <laughs> I should say Milos. Milos, yeah, Milos, say Milos. Name, Milos right? uh, okay. We're happy to have you back on. Say, good to have you on my podcast because I'm going to take over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to let you talk because we had to get uh, some expert opinion on this uh coverage of this uh, UK Arnold, which Matt and I just got back late last night. We wanted to go over a couple of things. Uh, go on all great trip. Uh, Arnold didn't show up. We kind of took uh, the duty of handing out the award to our winner, Andrew Jacked, myself and Ronnie Coleman, which was kind of a cool thing. Yeah. No, it was, it was, a, it was a fun trip. Well, Besides smuggling money for Milos. <laughs> well, okay, explain that. Come on. So, first. so this. So, yeah. go ahead and explain. So, yeah, I, I had a, a bunch of British pounds that the Jamie the Giant called me and said, "Hey, you have to exchange it by the September 30th." I said, "What do you mean? Those old notes are not going to work after September 30th." Like, oh my God, panic mode. So then, uh, idea was, okay, uh, you guys are going and. Uh, I gave the money to Matt, but then I realized I have more than 10000 which uh, should be too much for him. So the way I understand, he put uh, the rest of the money in. Uh, no, so, so he, gives me this, he gives me this, like this box that's like this big, and it's got like three packages in it all nicely wrapped up. It looked like. Well, you looked like, it looked like Christmas gifts. I know. It looks like you guys have like smuggled before because you guys were, you guys were really, you were really on this. So there's like. This box that has these three little things. It's wrapped in like this Japanese, like it's like Chinese, Chinese yeah. soft, le soft like fabric. <laughs> like you had some kind of cool it's a, it's item a in money, there. Money pocket, right? I have no idea what yeah. it is, but it was, was this massive Christmas box, record. and I'm like, I can't take this box. So one of them was open, and I kind of looked in the corner and it said like four thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah. So I went, okay, I don't know how much is here, but what if I get stopped by customs? <laughs> it happens from time to yeah. time. Yeah, you have so, to claim. So as we're walking through, I had all three of them, and I unzipped his bag, and I stuck one in his bag. I go, just in case they stop me, because yeah. I'm not going to get kicked out for having yeah. $15,000 on the me. lines, the lines at customs. And, yeah. You know, we flew on the plane, oh. and, I mean, they were giving Matt a hard time about the window. Like, they, the girls, <laughs> the girl wanted, you know, and every time we opened the window, we were, you know, we were dead tired, dude. We spent more time in the air than we did. 40 hours flying, we were yeah. 30 oh. hours there. Yeah, so, so, you know, they're cranking up the windows because they're so particular. First of all, we had to wear masks when we got to Germany because we laid over in Frankfurt. Garbage. And they're like, you need a mask. I'm like, what? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, we literally, they weren't really particular when you got on the plane, to be no, honest. They left it us was. Alone. But when you had a board, you had to wear the mask on. And I'm like, I had brought masks. Luckily, Angie had put masks in my bag. And then, of course, uh, we get on the plane and, you know, they're like, you know, you can't close the windows. And so as we're landing, they, no, the windows that were down because uh -huh. it's dark, you know, and for people that don't know, I had a transplant in my left eye. Mm -hmm. So when there's a ton of sun coming through, my, 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 my eye has a hard time with it. So I keep it down. I don't want the sun coming in. And the lady jammed it up and opened it. And she's like, we're landing. I'm like, what does my window have to do with us landing? She goes, well, it's, it's policy. In order for the plane to land, all the windows need to be up. And I'm like, what does it have to do with, <laughs> with my window? What, yeah. the pilot can't land because my window's open? And finally, I just... I'm she just started like, arguing. But it's funny because when we were on the Dreamliner, yeah. which we did on the lengthy... We did like a 12-hour on the way back uh, to San Francisco. Didn't say anything about the windows. No. No. But they were so crazy about <clears throat> rules and regulations and, you know, and then the, the guy in security, like, <laughs> dude, I, I brought everything in my, in a plastic bag. Instead of a toiletry, I put, I'm like, you know what? I'm there for a day. I'm just not even going to take a toiletry because that way I, when I packed it, I could see I have all my stuff in there. And I f forgot deodorant, by the way, but I had a, a right. Ziploc bag and it was like this big and... They tried telling me, well, you can't have a Ziploc bag that big. It's more it, than a liter. Yeah. So they literally said, 
okay, if you can't fit it all in this bag, you have to throw it out. So the guy's holding my cologne, which is like $250, and my my hair paste, which is another $50. And the guy's like, you can't take these. I said, well, what difference does it make if I throw something else out, like my shaving cream or something? He's like, okay. And we he got into an argument with him. So like, I started arguing with the guy because I'm like, I've never heard of this. I've been everywhere. I've never heard of this ever. I've never, I don't even carry a plastic bag with me. He's like, well, it's our policy here for the last 16 years. So the guy's arguing back and forth with me. And finally I said to him, dude, just zip it. Zip it. Yeah, I because don't zip it. He literally he, he said to me as we were standing, both <laughs> standing there, he's like, you have to throw this out. And then once we called the supervisor over, the supervisor's explaining, listen, this is a law, whatever else. And he's like, well, if you had let me finish, I was going to offer for your friend to take it. And he's like, don't lie. Because <laughs> he, he was, <laughs> he, he'd never offered. He's like, you have to throw this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just a, a nightmare. Can you imagine that? We because waited. Of his plastic bag was two inches bigger. They weren't going to allow him to take it on the Give a small person a power, they're going to use it. You know, that's we, how it is. You know, if he was a good guy, he would say, listen, this is how it is. Give it to the friend, and uh, yeah. it's it was over. it was just crazy because we got to the airport. Our flight was at nine out of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. We got to the airport at six o'clock, and Matt's like, "Why are we getting so so early?" If you saw the line, we waited in two, two hours, hours to get through security. through security, and we understood why. Yeah. And literally, we were literally bored. It's like the flight. it's like you go to get on, and you're thinking, "Oh, there's like this there's this little maze." So you get through the maze, you're thinking, "Oh, okay, it's right there." When you get through the other side. There's another maze that goes up and down and this way, this way. And then you get through that. And then there's another maze that goes this way. And Branch was with us yeah. and Michael from ba Gas and Better Bodies. We took two hours to get through the whole line. And then we have to deal with this dickhead. <laughs> Where, <laughs> which airport? Birmingham. Birmingham, Birmingham yeah. I'll yeah. I will, yeah. You know what? <laughs> we flew there. in there so we didn't have <laughs> to fly Dorian. through London. <laughs> now, if I ever go to that dump again, yeah, I said it's a dump. If I ever go there again, we're flying into London. Yeah, we drive. probably we probably should just drive next time. Yeah, it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. because in, in London, these other airports, they don't do this shit with their with the no, no. it's only it can only be a leader. And I'm like, this doesn't happen in London. They're like, we can only speak for our airport. It's here. And I yeah. said, well, how am I supposed to know this? Well, if you go to the government website in the UK, it says it on the website. I'm like, well, if it's the government, doesn't it account for London too? They don't do it there. And the and I feel bad. The woman looking at me, her glasses were this thick, and her eyes were. But listen, she looked that, like a cartoon character. That, that perfume would be, uh, you know, smelling good on that guy. You listen, it, the <laughs> thing is, is, is we, for once ever, this is the first time I did not check a bag overseas. Yeah, I said, you bag. know what? I said to him, I said, were there a day, let's just carry, the, you know, we weren't selling anything or whatever, so we just brought a carry-on. I brought a With suit. no bag. I no, went with just, no a, bag, just, just a carry-on. Yeah. yeah. Dude, we were there for literally a I'll day. I probably had appearance. three bags if I go for two days. We didn't even go for two days, though. We got yeah. in Saturday afternoon. We went to sleep. Yeah. We woke up. We worked Sunday. Went to the airport at 6. Smuggled my money. In. Besides <laughs> smuggling your money. Yeah. Right. What, what type of fee do I get for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just name it. All right, so it was it was pretty eventful, yeah. but uh, Arnold didn't show up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think a lot of people were... A lot of people were upset Arnold didn't show up. There was so much media. Like, everyone got on and started, like, kind of trashing the Arnold UK. And to be honest... The show was run very well. Yeah, like I, it I was. was well, why was not the uh, live stream? I mean, that's that's a major show. That, that would be. The, well, Samson did the live stream. Yeah, Samson but, uh, sat okay. right beside me like this for the whole. I know. So two hours. that's what I was watching on uh, Samson's uh, Instagram, but uh, I didn't see there what I'm seeing here. I mean, really, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we talk about <laughs> this because uh, I had completely one perception of the show. And who was good, who was not, and now that I've seen uh, 4K footage, like, wait a minute. So, so Sam, so Arnold didn't come. You know, more be, just so people understand, there was discrepancies with a lot of the people that had not gotten paid, from David Goggins to Ronnie Coleman to Lee Haney mm -hmm. to a lot Van of the Dam. people did not get paid. They got paid in the end, but they weren't paid up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. So Arnold was not coming. That was part of the reason, and. There was just a lot of, you know, I think there, there's a lot of people involved. And, it, you know, it yeah. wasn't Arnold himself promoting it. There were other promoters yeah. that were involved. I, I figured. But wasn't uh, European Arnold, like, in other federation a couple of weeks ago? They Well, they I don't know if they still have it. They had Arnold yeah. Spain. Yeah, that, that's that a, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't know if Arnold, I don't think he was at that one either. I don't know. So it was, uh, it was, it was, overall, it was, a, it was a good experience. Yeah. and. 
So you had somebody in the show. Yeah, I you had, had Jamie. Uh, Jamie the Giant. Yeah, okay. you guys met him. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we talk about this, I even mentioned today at the uh, uh, Old School Podcast with Dennis and Chris, and they, they say, like, listen, he's still not big enough. He's t- still too tall. He still needs to fill up the frame and all that stuff. He is over 300 pounds yeah. with a teeny tiny waist with the, the V taper that you can just kill for. I mean, anybody that sees his physique, they're, they're going to be impressed. I mean, look at my Instagram, a couple of pictures, like, whoa. But I'll post some pictures of him yeah, on this podcast. Uh, uh, when you look at the anatomic chart, you, you see, see the skeleton and then you see the uh, muscular system. So imagine if you're any bone, femur or humerus bone is this long or this long. So now this is a bone. Bone can be in going in a length. Muscle in a diameter, right? So do, do you expect that uh, exponentially grows from this to that, right? It's going to be much, much bigger. So he should look like, what, 400 pounds on the stage because he's still uh, so long? So I think the judges have to consider there is just a human limitation how, that, uh, how much muscle you can put on that frame. If you just look at the pure muscle, if it's in a shorter bone, it would be blown up like you can't even believe. So we were super happy with his look. He is unique, absolutely unique. Okay, somebody else showed up like the same height. Uh, I think <laughs> he's a little taller than him. Yeah. The other guy was Yeah, massive. supposedly, but uh, I've seen the pictures. Uh, I don't think he's uh, taller. But Jamie has unique look that nobody else has. Put him next to martin okay and you could see there was a moment they were next to each other and martin is as you said very muscular thick yeah. real bodybuilder right but he looked like a little child next to yeah, him yeah yeah i you, mean you uh, sent me that picture yeah it's like yeah. how do you compare this <coughs> so consider that uh, shape wise jamie had a beautiful shape i mean really we, we, we talked so he came and had beautiful he came shape. And, he came and mm-hmm. had breakfast with with when Jay and I were eating, he came and sat down. Yeah. And Jay to get, was talking to get the money. I mean, listen, yeah. listen to what, Milo, what, your money. what Milos is saying. Mm-hmm. Do you remember our conversation? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I told him, I said, dude, you have to pick and choose the shows that you do. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you need to be 350. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Be st- <laughs> because of his height. <laughs> you laugh. But, but you, think about <laughs> it. Nick Walker is 5'6". He's okay. 300 pounds. That, you that, just said that, 400. He yeah. needs, I'm not <laughs> kidding. He needs to be 350 on stage to be... Yes, comparable yeah. muscle like with the length of muscle and all yeah. that but it's not going to happen it's right happen, yeah. so he needs to he needs to capitalize on his strength which is the guy is so complete mm-hmm. he's the tallest probably the most complete guy complete, yes at yeah. six foot five right yeah. he he has a strength and he needs to mark it off of that can he do well in certain shows absolutely is he going to do well in like a top tier Contest, that's going to be the difficult task. Yeah. It's going to always be marked down for uh, yeah, not enough size. He, he uh, would never have a enough size proportionally next to the five foot nine, you know, 50 pounds lighter than him, but uh, it's uh, still proportionally much thicker. But, but I, you know, the pictures, the pictures sometimes like, uh, and we'll get into this when we discuss the show, like sitting there, you know, we talk about the transitions that you miss in the images, right? Yeah. There's so much more to see than just what the poses or someone standing yeah. next to someone looks like, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but no question, the crowd loved him. Um, yes. He had a great routine. He yeah. posed to one of my classic songs, All the Lights. Uh, um, he did the stomp. <coughs> yeah, he did the quad <laughs> stomp. Yeah, he and he was in he great shape. Yeah. I mean, he, he like you said, he's improving. I think he's planning to go to, you know, yeah. Reno. Yeah, he's, he's there right now. I told him that I'm going. Oh, he's going to do France this oh, week. France, okay. France okay. first. Uh because you competed so many times, and he is transparent. He put everything on uh, his YouTube channel. I fill him up with the 5,000 grams he of He told carbs. me it was like it's crazy, unbelievable, right? yeah. So you push, 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 5,000. Uh, 5, no water restriction, no sodium restriction, just it. And all he took was uh, one-third diazide the night before, yeah. and he did one-fourth morning of a show. So, of course... You know, when so you he took less than you to do all this podcast? I, I took one milligram of Bumex last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, listen, he still could have been a little harder from behind. Yeah, from behind. You, know, you know, for but, sure. But you see, this is uh, when you have to uh, toss the coin. Okay, what I gain here, of course you don't what I lose, lose here. I know, yeah. I know. It's so uh, let him lose two uh, back poses. Let him lose those poses and be powerful be in, there. in the front. Yeah. Uh, look, front poses, uh, lot spread. Abshot, phenomenal, yeah. Uh, most muscular, it's it's great. 
Side poses are good too. The only thing is uh, legs from the side when you are, you know, six five. You know, I, I didn't like his triceps uh, 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 foot position like Dorian or Hunter Labrada. I said that expose your leg being uh, uh, smaller, put it back. He looks beautiful. I mean, beautiful shape. Side triceps, side uh, side chest. Looks great. He looks great. Yeah, but uh, is he competitive? So today on an old school podcast, when I d just touched the subject, not seeing this footage. I said, like, well, put him next to James and let's analyze. Okay, he is uh, uh, James Hollingstead, right? He is so much wider, so he beats him in front three legs pose easily. Mm -hmm. He beats him in the uh, front last spread easily. You know, uh, and I'm trying to talk about all that stuff, and then I see a footage right now, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna zip it up and not say anything <laughs> else because uh, I want to see it. the footage. Yeah, because uh, this is different. For sure, one of the, to me, <coughs> the the biggest highlight of the weekend. About two weeks ago, I got a call from Brian Powers, who runs the Arnold, and he said, we're going to give the Lifetime Achievement Award to Flex Wheeler. And, but we want to, we've never done this. We want to pr present it at the Arnold UK. So we got a bunch of people to do videos, and it was another one of those things where a bunch of people knew about this and it didn't get leaked out, which, which gives me hope because a lot of times people leak shit yeah. out. So David Bay was over there, my old training partner, and he they put together this presentation. He announced it for it, and Flex had no idea. He was walking by to go to the bathroom. He was like, stop. And he stood there, and then he got presented, and he just started crying. And it was just, oh it, was a, it was a cool moment that we all got to, was, got to see in, in person. That was beautiful. Uh, next time, if you want to leak, just call Sean Ray, tell him, and tell him, this is secret, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Ray knew, he was in the video. <laughs> oh, he knew, he didn't say nothing? Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> But, but listen, I mean, what, is, what does he mean to you, Flex? Yeah, he's uh, absolutely Mr. Olympia. That never happened. I asked uh, Lee Haney today, like, uh, how do you, you know, judge nineties? And uh, after you left, Dorian took over, and Dorian was beating physiques like Flex Wheeler, Kevin LeBron, Sean Ray, Chris Cormier, right? So, you know, do you agree with that? So Lee was uh, kind of politically correct and beat around <laughs> the bush. So I put it again. If it's up to Lee, he would uh, go for these four physiques, right? And um, the, the problem is when you look at particular Olympia, 93 or 94 or 95 or 96, did Flex Wheeler uh, deserve to beat uh, Dorian? 93 for me was questionable. The 93, that's probably the best condition for uh, Flex. But this is when Dorian came and just overwhelmed everybody with that yeah. uh, size. You said yourself... When there was the U against Phil Heat, with uh, counts for something, right? And that's where Flex Wheeler lost to Dorian. You know, we talk about it. It's not like Dorian had a better arms or better legs, you know, better abs. No, he was just wider. And yeah. you know. so Flex Wheeler, if you ask any pro bodybuilder from you, I'm sure, uh, Ronnie Coleman, uh, all of us, we all appreciate Flex and point out that this is the best physique probably of all time They're if he would one. be if he would be a uh, crazy condition then have a, a condition up to ronnie coleman 98 olympia then probably we, we would state that was the best body on the, on the planet earth what about yourself yeah i mean me? it's uh you know when i used to see him at gold's venice i mean have you ever seen anyone in that hot skins outfit look like that like round and yeah. it was just crazy because his waist was like non-existent that was a difference you know because phil heat's pretty well put together too but he didn't have the taper that flex yeah. had you know if you look at genetics and ronnie early on had crazy small waist also um and flex just had the proportions but you know where he missed was the lat spread like the, especially the rear lat spread and like the front double he didn't have crazy wide lats but he just had the big arms and he had the abs right yeah. so like, if you look at more aesthetics, how would he do in today's lineup? Hmm. That would Flex? Be a, yeah, I mean, it would just, when you're 216 or whatever at that 93, Arnold, or, Arnold yeah, yeah, or whatever. So it'd be difficult, right? It would be difficult. I mean, we're we going to analyze here and, and say it, but then again, those arms, those shoulders, those hanging hamstrings, right, and, and uh, a striated, separated uh, quads, I mean, he had the shape, and I, I would always award shape first. You know, he's pushing. So Andrew Jack was our winner this weekend. Yeah. One of the, before we even get to that, mm -hmm. Ashley Kaltwalser 
wins again. She's a local girl. Yes. How many is that? Fifth pro win. Thirty fifth. Uh, that's not never going to be. Could you imagine? A lot of pros don't even do thirty shows. Yeah. yeah. She th- that and think of how many times she got second. I don't know. Yeah. Probably just as many. <clears throat> I don't know how many shows she's done, but I'm assuming yeah. she's done more shows than anybody. <laughs> yeah. But shout out to Ashley for winning. So yeah. Milos has done the most shows. Seventy two. No, seventy two. Um, I thought Dexter passed you. Dexter passed me, and. Uh, which I didn't realize back in the day. I don't know why Peter McGough didn't point out this to me. Albert Backless did more. Albert Backless, uh, yeah, he was 61 years old when he beat all of us at the Niagara Falls in 91. And, and then when uh, uh, you go on the muscle memory and you can see all the competitions, uh, he did more. And wow. uh, yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about the show. So Jay and I were, Jay and I were front at row. the show, front row. <coughs> and... You know what? I, people are messaging me what I thought and what Jay thought. We weren't front row. We we're actually behind the judges. Well, we we're behind the yeah. Well, that was technically front row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The best seat in the house. We, we got, the I, I took right. some 4K footage. Yeah. And so we're going to show 4K footage of what we saw. I know it's still footage. Yeah. But it's not the stream that people saw. Yeah. So And, and I'm going I'm to point out this too because we talked and we disagreed on the phone, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, but you were seeing things front row, and I was seeing from Samson uh, Instagram page, right? And uh, and uh, I really did not appreciate a like, couple of uh, guys as much as what I'm gonna do now because uh, now I, I see the real footage. I thought that uh, James wasn't in good condition, you know. I, I thought so because first he doesn't have that V taper, and then uh, for me I didn't see a single striation. On the shoulders and chest or uh, anywhere, he has a, a good back. Back though, biceps, he beat everybody. But uh, everything else for me, I was like, okay, he, he is just not there. Now when I see this footage, I have to apologize to him. It's like, well, uh, I guess uh, I, I didn't see what you look like. So, so well, yeah. I'll let Jay. You know, well, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up, <clears throat> I'm going to put up the footage that. I filmed this from my phone. Mm-hmm. This is not compressed. Like the one I sent yeah. you was compressed. compressed. This was Bluetooth to the computer, so it's it's the full yeah. wide footage. And this here is going to be the first. Uh, this was the top four, the call out of them. And yeah. I'm just going to play it, and you guys just tell me when you want okay. to stop. But I'll yeah, have stop you guys at the, every pose. It. Yeah, stop at every pose. Okay. So go ahead and let you guys. All right. So we were expecting. Andrew Jack to just dominate because uh, we agree he is spectacular, has yep. a shape, and nobody can touch him. He's going to be 100% here. He was 70% in uh, Texas. So our expectations were, okay, okay we're going to see an uh, alien coming to the earth. Right. And then he showed up, still one hands down, in my opinion, but the conditioning left some question marks. Even you said that yep. he deserved to win because. Yep. So Jay, Jay was... You saw him uh, for the first time, right? Yeah. And uh, what, what was your impression? Uh, I was expecting more, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And in no way is this to discredit mm-hmm. what what he's achieved or how he looks, or mm-hmm. because I'll I'll say it right out: like this guy, if he actually gets in the shape that expectations are, I think he can beat everyone but Rami. Yeah. You know, if Rami's at he his, can, he can be. You know, uh, <laughs> if he's in shape like these other guys are. Because He's, because yes. of his structure, like uh, listen, the way he stands in a in a like relaxed shot, um, his front lat spread, I mean the front double, like he's got everything. Every it, front pose is, and he's uh, you know he hangs crazy. from the side, like you know we'll go over that, mm-hmm. but like the so, the pecs are so full, the midsection's detailed. Um, you can see everything. Like Matt and I were discussing, like you can see everything is there. So if he actually lost. A little bit, but the problem is if he sacrifices to get that backside in, is it going to take away from Does it take away the pop? uh, What he has. You you, you know this. I saw him uh, with uh, Steve Weiberger at uh, Dragon's Lair, and that day he looked considerably better than here. I I, I promise you. Bigger, fuller, strided, everything. And conditioning-wise, I think he was better in the gym. I know, so, but it's yeah. hard to say. It, it's, it's yeah. you know, it, you get this. Yeah, so, so you, okay. you as a person who diets people, yeah. if he, and we're going to get to the back, yeah, if poses, he's going to lose something. If he loses a couple more pounds, is that going to affect his look on these other shots uh, where he's lights out? So it's not going to affect his width, no. right? His chest, uh, 
fully loaded, hanging straight in a lat spread pose. I mean, it's crazy. His chest is sticking out like this. Yeah. It's not going to affect Even him. Even when he stands relaxed, yeah. Milos, like, there's just so much going on. Yeah. yeah. Abs are uh, ridiculous. It looked like, uh, uh, <laughs> you say, liver, liver king with the fake yeah, implants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he, his uh, uh, abs look perfect. But, okay, you froze this in this moment. Yeah. If I'm a judge in this moment, I won't see conditioning because he relaxed his, his legs. That's why I talk I'm constantly. Muscle you, control. Yeah, you can't assume that, okay, if he was flexing, it would be better. But right here, front double biceps would be his pose. Now he didn't flex his uh, uh, quads, legs, his and now what do we do? Now you, you see the point of maybe Patrick beat him, right? Uh, the Patrick, Martin, and James. Martin, Martin okay, uh, which was surprised for me that he flexed the abs in the front of the biceps. He usually does a vacuum, and uh, he doesn't have a six-pack, but only four-pack, right? So not to exemplify a weakness, but here actually it doesn't look like a weakness. He has intercostal serratus. He looks quite good. I don't agree with his uh, uh, horizontal uh, positioning, not putting the biceps above his uh, not peak biceps. He could create the illusion of you know, more peak going uh, uh, higher than the shoulders, supinating uh, completely. Then, then this pose would be uh, very competitive. For James, uh, I didn't see him that conditioned. So now when well, I see this, very work, holy shit, he was conditioned. I, I made a comment today in, uh, in the podcast, like you couldn't see any separations, striations, and all this stuff. Here, I'm actually seeing it. But he's not V-tapered, so he doesn't pop out. He doesn't have a crazy arms, right? So not comparable to these two guys, Patrick and uh, uh, Andrew. Uh, shallow abs. Normally, and his legs were not super uh, deeply separated. You yeah. can see they're lean. They're very good from behind, but from the front, separation is still lacking. Yes, full round, so uh, thicker than uh, in the most of the guys. I thought that uh, Patrick was too dry, and I never said this in my life before, right? I, I didn't think that bodybuilder can be too dry. Because dryness, that's great conditioning. It is great conditioning. But uh, I think his uh, muscle also lacked fullness, uh, the, 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 the hydration. It didn't really push, it didn't pop for me. He was granite hard, and because uh, he's super dark, you mentioned uh, Eddie Abu back in the day, one of my athletes who was razor sharp, but on the stage you can't see nothing because it's too, way too dark. And then, like Samson in um, Boston, his wife put literally two bottles of oil. And kept soaking it up. He's soaking it up. I mean, uh, ten minutes later, he's completely dry. And you know, so for finals, we wanted to make sure that uh, we put so much. And I was just about to leave. Billy and Bonya calls me. I mean, let's look. Look at Samson. Samson dry uh, to the bone again. Like, oh my God. So he needed much more oil. I think that he would pop. But in this pose right now, okay, I would give it to Andrew Jack if he flexes his legs. Cards. Yeah, because Andrew was conditioned from the front. He was conditioned from the front. Uh, th this is my statement. Because of uh, intercostals, deep abs, striated the chest, how can you say that he is not conditioned? Yep. But when he turns to the, to the backside. What do, you, what do you think on this, Jay? You look at these four. Uh, you know, I was there. So, you know, James was in phenomenal condition. When Martin first came out, I thought, okay, people are going to have a problem with him because his lower body was definitely in a tighter condition um, from the back. He had a lot of the great poses. Um, like I said, Andrew Jack is very, very impressive, and Patrick also. And then the guy that was fifth actually was really impressive. Uh, Mark, Mark Yeah, yeah Mark he was Carter. really good. It's just that his back, he, he just, just needed more detail in his back, but he was super impressive. I wish he was in this lineup. But uh, listen, pa first time seeing Patrick, you know, uh, honestly, James, I really didn't pay attention as much at the Olympia last year. Martin, we haven't seen in this kind of li lineup, and then Andrew Jack. I mean, this is this is the it was guy a good that lineup. It was the good. guy the guy that I was continuing to think, okay, this guy's going to make a run at Olympia. I mean, I've said it here, and like when we've been here, Milos, I thought for sure. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Oh I mean, I mean, listen, Patrick's huge, but look at Andrew. Like his pecs and and the thing is, is Milos like he can be better conditioned from the front, even, even no from the front. Yeah, there's no question. But yeah. when you know, and uh, listen, 
I mean, right here, uh, Martin is 25 years old. You know, mm -hmm. the maturity is still absent, like, to what is his potential is just crazy, right? Yes. And then James, I mean, he's not sitting in this pose yet, but, I mean, he had the loudest crowd applause, and they loved him. He was the freak of the show, like muscle freak, even though, you know, if Jack had a little more detail from the backside, like, I mean, they would have went crazy for him. Yeah, um, he was very confident, very, very confident. But look at that front lat spread, man. It's ridiculous for, uh, but see, he flexed his legs, and uh, it's he didn't do the front double. Yeah, but he yeah. did here. Yeah, he didn't. So he's just got to learn more muscle control, yeah. you know. And and uh, Patrick is in a way better condition, right? Yeah. In a way better condition, but it's not so visible now. When you look at, uh, especially you know, from uh, look at from the you know far out. Uh, you can't say that Patrick, you know, overwhelmed him in, in in condition department, and shape department, and uh, size and the width, uh, X frame, V taper, uh, deep abs, strided uh, chest. I mean, it's all into Andrew's favor. But James, again, uh, like I said, looks much better <laughs> than I, I thought. So I have to uh, eat my words. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Uh, again, I didn't see James disconditioned, and I didn't see a single striation on his packs. Now I'm seeing it. Yeah, I, I didn't. He was in shape, uh, for sure. And that, that's why I didn't consider him to be uh, uh, on top. But here it's uh, very impressive. And uh, uh, Patrick looks bone dry. It doesn't uh, look as full. His chest is kind of flattish. Uh, so... Andrew, in, uh, probably from a little bit different angle, w would beat him in this uh, shot. But uh, Martin is also good. Seeing this now, I would give it this to James over... Uh, side chest? Yeah, side chest. I, I, I didn't before. I didn't see him winning this, what do you this think, shot. I know, it's just hard for me to not look at Andrew, you know? Yeah. I mean... When Andrew did that transition, Milos, you know mm. you have your thing where he t you twist and you hide yeah. the distension sometimes. Andrew doesn't have to try. Yeah. You know, look at the midsection. Watch Andrew's yeah. midsection. He, look at this. I mean, watch the transition here. Look at this. Look at the waist. Look at the look at the abs. Yeah. Look at the control. No twist yeah. to hide anything. Boom. Okay. Just. I mean, think about if he was just, I mean, if he had some more condition yeah. from the back. But I mean, look at Patrick's lines. So look at James's lines. Yeah, st know. stop right here. But, okay, let's cover the upper body and let's look at the lower body. Okay? Uh, he loses to all three. Mm -hmm. The hamstring. Yeah. yeah. In, uh, so all three guys beat him in a, a lower lower department. In this one. Now let's go to uh, with the upper body. Yeah, uh, I love his shape. I love his run. My chest is full, shoulders is full. I'm just full. So, yeah, he is super competitive, but uh, at Olympia, right, in, in this pose, uh, he, he's going against Brandon Curry, who has a great side chest. Um, Rami. Rami, 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 Rami Hadi has a great side chest. William Ooh, Bonac. William Bonac has a great side chest. You know, so, so does Nick, Nick Walker. Yeah. Uh, here, yeah, uh, let's also mention something that we never mentioned. Front double biceps, right? It's called double biceps, and bi biceps is looked upon, right? It's whole body always, but it's front double biceps. And uh, many times, biceps they determine. Uh, that's what we are looking for. That's why it's called front double biceps. Front lat spread. They want you to spread your lats as much as you can. Yeah, your body has to uh, look a certain way. But uh, side chest, yeah, you have to do the, you know, the chest, chest have to you know, pop you know, majorly. So each and every pose, yeah, again, pause is, pose is called and you have to present that muscle, but the uh, whole body has to look good. So in the chest department, I think uh, Andrew has one of the craziest chests I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so. It's like, uh, Lee, it's like Lee Haney, dude. Yeah. Shoulders, arms, everything is Remember there. Remember how crazy his pecs were? Lee, Lee Haney, yeah. 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 So here is where uh, Matt was telling me, okay, no way uh, this condition would uh, <laughs> uh, put him in the, in the Th front This row. was my, you know, when everyone's saying he's going to be in the first call out and one out the Olympia, the poses we've seen so far, yes, but yeah. to me, from the back, 
he's going to have a problem. Okay, tell me why he's going to have a problem. Conditioning. Okay, because why, he doesn't have the details. Anyway. Because who who's he going to stand next to that has all that crazy Nick Walker, Hottie, Nick, even Rami has it to a certain degree now. Um, Hunter didn't. Bon, uh, uh, Bonick. Bonick. Um, if Samson's in there, yeah, Samson I mean, is there. <laughs> so I, I see what you're saying. There's not a ton of guys, but I mean, even Ian gets crazy shredded from the back. I just don't think this right here would play out well on the Olympia stage, this conditioning from the back. Again, cover the upper body. Well, I he, mean, he Martin, lost the I know Mar everybody. Martin here is where, this is where he kind of. He made up ground. He made, made up ground. Yeah, he, I mean. And yeah. so does James and so does Patrick. Yeah. yeah. James is freaky in uh, backdoor biceps. I mean, really freaky. I, I just can't believe how much different is this footage and what uh, I've yep. seen. So. I'm sure people texting me were like, I said, look, man, like it's, yeah. I mean, Andrew's going to win, but there's guys that are, they're holding their own in, in a lot of different poses against him. Yes. You no, know, but you guys, you know, Jay's been there. You've been there. In your opinion, how does this, how does this type of conditioning from the back play out at the I Olympia? mean, James was impressive, dude. Like from the back, James had business here being yeah. the guy, you know, being the guy him. Uh, I mean, uh, Martin too. Yeah. And uh, Patrick's back is still a <laughs> little bit too weak, uh -huh. especially uh, last spread. I mean, uh, and even here. But the question is: is how much better was Andrew than Texas? I don't think he was better, really. I I, I don't think so. And they said he was six to eight pounds less than Texas. Now, yeah, yeah, really. I I, I don't see he's better. You know, in Texas, everybody's. Uh, Eyes were drawn to just him a lineup in a lineup. Right. It was like, oh my god! But it's not just a lineup. He could stand next to, you know, uh, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's uh, he was looking so good. It was like impressive. So we were having high expectations. It's still Andrew Jack showed up, but conditioning, especially now in these poses, right? So if you start the competition from a back double biceps pose, and a back last spread pose, he would start on a very bad note, right? Yeah. But uh, thankfully, uh, from the front, you know, he kind of dominates in yeah. that shape. That's why I said even today in a uh, podcast with Dennis, even with this kind of shape, he can make a top six at Olympia, and he, yeah, he disagreed. He disagreed. Uh, I mean, there is still overwhelming shape, overwhelming V-taper, uh, enough conditioning from the front and side. And even but from but the back. Let's say this, though. Even from the front. What's he going to look like standing? Let's say he stands in between Hottie and Nick Walker, yeah. who are ridiculously peeled. How, is he going to look like he's not conditioned from the front next to them? You know, uh, I don't think so. Because, yeah. because, but he is obviously overwhelming. A uh, super small way, super wide shoulders, standing right, uh, right there next to him, he's going to look very, very good. Yeah. And then when he flexes the chest and shit starts happening... Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I don't see so, him losing so do there. You, do you think he can make up enough ground from this to Olympia? I do, do think, but uh, uh, I also think he's not experienced bodybuilder that didn't do a million shows, and maybe it's already kind of too much because he did the Arnold Amateur, and then he did uh, the Texas. Three major shows. This yeah, time. so maybe his body <laughs> uh, break. need breaks. Uh, God knows. I mean... Uh, I talk all this. That's I a lot competed. coming from you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I competed all the time. I disagree with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be in shape all the time. I, I really think there was a mistake for him to do this show, even though he won. Uh, I think that he could have uh, do much more damage at Olympia if he didn't focus on that show. Yeah, he has Arnold Classic UK victory, you know, whatever prize money is, and the momentum. But uh, I think it's going to kind of hurt him that he didn't have a full prep for the Olympia. The last run. Ooh, look at the uh, spread. Okay. All right. Go ahead. What do you think? Uh, Martin looks pretty impressive yeah. there, right? Yeah. I don't know if this is your screen. It's an uh, angled screen, so it's like a wide no, angle. Mar or Martin looked really no, good. No, yeah. I mean, it's, it's Martin looked good from behind for sure. Yeah, he wins this shot. You know, the James Hellingstead also is super competitive. I think that Martin is. Wider has a more pronounced V taper, and there and tech, so uh, he should win this shot. I mean, if you look at the hamstring, is way more uh, defined and uh, and separated than uh, uh, Hollingsted. Um, Patrick, 
It's granite hard, but it's not separated. You know? yeah. look, at, look at here. I mean, again, I, I just don't think his muscle popped because he was uh, quite dehydrated yeah. overall. You, Jay? Yeah, I mean, Martin did look good here, but, you know, James, obviously. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't paying as much attention to Patrick for some reason. I don't know. The se- so know. They d- I have two videos here, this mm-hmm. one and the gonna, second one, yeah. they flip them. Yeah, we will so see. So Patrick is. I, I mean, yeah. That's what I said. If you judge right now and you see this and you have to score, I would score uh, Martin uh, James uh, <laughs> because of conditioning. I would go to uh, – no, I would still go with uh, Andrew Third and Patrick Ford because uh, Patrick doesn't have a wit. So, again, now if, if Andrew has this type of conditioning, conditioning then, uh, then Andrew he's, probably w- he's still battling win. to win the Olympia. Yeah, still win. Because uh, look at he has a that uh, hamstring glute tie-in, yeah. and kind of striations, uh, you know, waiting to happen. I said this before. You can be a fat guy and still have a, a striations, and you have a guys they're ripped and there's no single striation there. You're just not there. It's genetics. Yeah. D- uh, so I thought I was afraid that maybe Andrew doesn't have a genetics to have a, a striated, but uh, seeing a couple of those filtered shots. And I don't know how the people use that filter. And then all of a sudden, I've seen some uh, uh, glute striations. So if I would focus on that now, everything he does for our legs, I would push from the heel, squeeze the glutes on every rep, uh, anything he does, uh, just like squeeze the hell out. Hel- you said that before you didn't have uh, glutes, but then you worked on it. And uh, by the end of your career, you had the uh, you know, striated glutes. Yeah. What would, is there some advice you would give him? No, this is conditioning, dude. He's not going to have cords in the hamstrings. You can see that's apparent. Like he's not going to have what what uh, Mar- Martin has, yeah, or James in a sense. I mean, it's like or Regan, Regan, well, Regan yeah, but, but like yeah. even Patrick here, right? You see one major cord. He's not, you know, Andrew's never going to have like the Ronnie Coleman, yeah, like different different cords, yeah. But he's going to have. He could have the condition, you know, but. The condition has to go, like, especially from the back here. Like, if you look at, for example, like, look at Mark, like, just go back and forth between him and Martin and look at the detail on, like, the outer thighs all the way to the front. Do you see how thin that skin is? And, like, that would make Andrew Jack's legs look that much bigger if he actually held that kind kind of conditioning. Because looking at Martin next to him, he smokes him right here. He smokes Andrew Jack, really. It doesn't does. matter how, like, listen, we can talk about structure, but, like, that's not, like, that's not close yeah. in that shot, right? No, that's close, yeah. Hands down. I mean, look at James. Look at that. I mean, let's let's not take discredit these guys. Yeah. James I, I thought, you know, people were texting me when I was sitting there, and I was like, it's, they're like, you know, Andrew's killing them from this angle and that angle. I said, dude, it's not. Like you think. I mean, he's going to win. He's a superior bodybuilder. Yeah. But these guys are holding their own in a lot of poses. Right, yeah. Milos? I mean, you can see yeah. the, the detail, you know? Yeah. But once again, the transitions. I mean, look okay. at the pecs hanging on Andrew. Yeah. It's just... And look at the waist. I mean, Super flat abs, yeah. yeah, yeah it's just... It's freeze there. Okay. I mean, oof. All four guys look great. <laughs> I, I mean, know, but look at, the, look at the tie-ins on Jacked. Yeah. For the size of the delt, you know, and then the pecs just hang forward. I mean, I mean, James looks like his tricep here is just, I mean, shit, yeah. Martin, too. It, I mean, it's crazy. It's hard yeah. to see Patrick because he's kind of twisted to the outside, but. All four guys look great in this yeah, place, I okay? Mean, but conditioning-wise, if yeah. this is the only picture you've seen it, conditioning-wise, it's not like uh, uh, Andrew is losing in condition department. Yeah. It's uh, so shape is there, size is there, round muscle bellies, super flat abs, strided, thick chest. Look at that. Okay, uh, Pat, uh, the Patrick look looks pretty good in this pose. I think he's leaning forward a little bit too much. And uh, James, uh, again, like I had to apologize, uh, saying before that I've never seen illustrations. He had a illustration on his delts that I, I never actually noticed. Uh, so. Hmm. See, when Andrew locks his thighs, I mean. Yeah. He has the crustaceans. Yeah. This is this video. You know, I see uh, I see a lot of comparisons with Tony Freeman and Andrew. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 
I mean, but we is, didn't we didn't uh, rave about. Okay, now this is the so now we it's just reversed. this is the last. Comparison. Yeah, it was the last. They just reversed the guys out. So then Andrew yeah. and Martin were on the outside. So they go through the same. Okay, so now when you look at Andrew's squads, it's a different story, right? So here it's a standout winning the shot right here. Okay, nobody comes close. James looks gigantic here. Mm. James has quads are just... Phew. Yeah, well, you see, even with the quads and condition that he has, he's not showing the deep separation. Uh, but he has it, though. Yeah. The separation's there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not that... And we, saw it, and we saw it in the... In the in life. Transitions, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where you could see that there was a lot of detail. You know, Martin sits on his abs, which, you know, I could never do. Obviously, he looks better, but. Oof. Look at Andrew Jack now here. Again. <laughs> yeah. At any point, just tell me if you want me to stop. Wait, wait, wait. wait. There was, uh, you know, at the, Back a little bit. at the top of the pose, just uh, freeze it. So, yeah, for some reason, uh, James, even though he's in the middle, he looks uh, bigger here. I don't know if he's uh, out-tangling them, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going a little bit forward. But uh, it, looks, it looks good. My comments uh, for James, he still doesn't have that wide lats. Yeah. Uh, Patrick looks very conditioned. He kind of needs to pop. I mean, uh, it, it's nothing popping out. Like, it's popping for... Uh, and the jack. Stop right here. Okay. Well, upper body wise, uh, Andrew for me yeah. right there, but uh, legs are not exactly. So if you're judged, what do you do? If I have to judge this pose, St structure, you know. So even though you know legs are not there, he, he do you know, do you know he obviously how? said that he lost in the leg department here. Do you, do you? Why do you think that Andrew, like when looking from the side, it's like he, he pulls his elbow back further? Is there a reason for that? I have no issue with his side chest. I know yeah, there's a yeah. lot of discussion about it, but you know, like the other guys have their arms straight up and down, and his is a little bit pulled back more. Is there a reason for that? You know, uh, I think it looks good. Yeah. It, no, it I'm just, not saying he yeah. just. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, once again, Milos, you like Andrew's legs are longer than everyone else's. So it's like we talked about with Jamie. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we're not as floored with how big the legs look, but uh, he's at the height. end. Of the, he's at the end of this screen, so it's not really a fair. Yeah. You know what what people see in real life. He just he looks just, crazy. Yeah. See here, glutes are trying to come out <laughs> for uh, Andrew. Yeah, look at James though. I mean, Patrick looks good. I mean, look at look at Martin on the end. I mean, dude. Yeah. I would give uh, uh, James back double biceps. And I would give Martin uh, rear lat spread mm -hmm. um, over these guys. Yeah, but wow. Uh, Yeah, Patrick doesn't have a width. He has a condition. Uh, Andrew has a width. Yeah, you know, definitely width. He's probably the only one that can. I don't know if he's as wide as Rami, but they're he's a, a no, guy that's no. wide like Rami. Nobody's as wide as <laughs> Rami, that's for sure. Yeah, but you know, listen, we're nitpicking about Andrew's conditioning, and he still wins the show. Pretty mm -hmm. like without question, he won. Without question, opinion. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I was so sitting there. I know you asked, like, what's Jay think, and what did I say? I mean, yeah, no, you said Andrew. Andrew, did you I mean, agree, with Milo? Sure. Yeah, for me, Andrew is. Uh, but you know, did you agree when Matt told you uh, what what Jay think? The crystal clear, clear winner. Yeah. Let me look at that. Look but at this. Look see, at but his quads pop there. Yeah. He said also that we you two expected a little bit more. I said that to him too. I, I expected more. you think here uh, Andrew Jack you know, for sure I'm actually surprised that um, Martin looks as good as he does here because he has a four pack not six pack <laughs> but uh, it looked quite good again not to pick uh, 
how many times over on uh, James. See, the he other he thing doesn't is have Martin, a deep abs. Martin at the end of this, he started, you know, you saw his tan starting to run down too. Yeah. And I think that affected him as well. Muscular, yeah. Freeze, freeze there. Uh, go back just uh, two seconds. Yeah. Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew um, looks ridiculous. Yeah, here. ridiculous. Yeah. So see this on the Olympia stage next to Hunter and Nick and uh, yeah. yeah, he's super, super competitive so in the mass department. Do you? So like I asked before. Is there enough time for him to make a, a, a in enough your opinion? Time, dude. It's fucking twelve weeks. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying. If is he is he tired? Is he this? Like, do you he think could, he could rest for f four weeks. six weeks and yeah. still like? Yeah, I, I think th this body is going to be there, right? He doesn't need to really make more size. Yeah, you know, can you? Uh, you just have to chisel what he has, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe he'll come yeah. in at three hundred pounds. Uh, how heavy is it was here? I don't know. He said Not he was. Sure. I mean, we heard two, over two ninety before, but I mean, if even if he was two eighty something, I mean, yeah. So it's funny. I asked Matt when he saw him at the expo. I said, "How does he look in clothes?" And Matt's like, "You know, he's." He's not as big as I expected him to be, but it's mm. usually those guys that's like the Phil Heath effect, yeah. right? You take the clothes off and hold. You, you know what you it know? is because. I've been around when he was that big and when yeah. Ronnie was that big. And it doesn't matter what that you you couldn't hide the size. Yeah. Some of these guys now you can't tell they have that size until they strip down. Where Jay could have five, you know, sweatshirts on and you couldn't hide it. Yeah. It was just Jay, massive. He, Jay had a, these crazy white, white shoulders. shoulders. Paul Dillett in the clothes that didn't look big. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I traveled with him many times and it's like a what the hell happens when he takes the clothes, shirt off? Yeah, it's the color of the crazy. room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Andrew Jack, I mean, I see him in the gym, and he looks wide. He yeah. is wide. I don't know why you felt like he didn't. No, this, no, he was all good. covered up. No, mm -hmm. he was just covered up. He didn't look. He didn't seem overwhelmingly massive when he asked me. Well, but but dude, our expectations were like, yeah. okay, this guy is like the next Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, that's yeah. what people are saying. So I expected to see this guy <clears throat> come out and just whoa. You know, I'm not saying. I mean, he's obviously like going to be listen, an elite in guy. My, in my mind, Milos, uh, I thought, can this guy come in his first time and win the Olympia at certain points? You know, you know. And then, of course, these pictures of Rami come out, and I'm like, oh shit, that ain't going to happen this year. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Rami. I mean, Rami too. can come in at 80 percent, and he's still like with what he's got going on. It's just wild, you know. I think so too. Rami cannot lose. I mean, he's just overwhelming. They would have to have they, a colossal fuck up for him. Yeah, <laughs> they had the uh, comparisons. Uh, you know how on Instagram you have this uh, yeah. comparisons between uh, those two, and it was obvious into Rami's favor. Yeah, but but here I must say once again, uh, I'm very impressed with the James here that I didn't see it on the video footage. So I I had it actually. Um, Fuad called me after prejudging. So oh, you know, let's do the analysis. I said, I've seen only the bad video footage. So I, I can't really make that analysis. But then I did, and I said a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I wasn't impressed, but now I'm I'm very impressed with James. And, uh, so this weekend, James and Patrick. James and Patrick and Jamie are all competing yeah. this weekend in uh, Nice, France, at the Yamamoto Cup. Yeah. What do you? Nice. What do you? Ex do you? Do you think James could pull it off this time and pull ahead of Patrick? It's going to be super tough. You know, it's going to be super tough. But now that I've seen James in actual condition, yeah, I mean, he can impress a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, this I don't even know crazy if, Olympia this year. if he can uh, make these abs deeper. I always say I believe that the abs can be deeper. I mentioned that story. I was uh, in Serbia. I came to U.S. in 87, and then 88 I went back, and I was training. I did a lot of hanging leg raises, cable crunches, and then I guess you know, people were watching video taping. You know, next year I came back to uh, Yugoslavian Championship, and everybody had uh, crazy deep abs. You know, so I, that's why I told Regan, uh, I tell everybody, keep doing, make them deeper. So uh, I would say this for um, James. I mean, it would be major different if now, 
standing like this with this crazy chest and shoulders uh, and legs if he had a deeply chiseled can you imagine if the these spine. guys actually listened and did the ab work that you're telling them to do i don't know why they don't i, I still i used to do a lot of ab work man yeah. Yeah, every day didn't you yeah at i did yeah. i did before and after training and especially you see sean ray you know he is the one that told me i mean because uh, yeah, I, I didn't section. train abs all the time but he says hey you have the crazy abs so make them even more prominent more deeper and i always did yeah, yeah. so yeah, matarazzo told you you're an ironing board <laughs> no, no, no my queen my queen <laughs> oh okay okay <laughs> my queen we said the first time i i asked uh, lee haney today i told him jay cutler you know initially he had a mindset or oh, 99 at olympia you were expecting a call out with the uh, ronnie. ronnie coleman yeah uh, and that you, uh, you know, really believed you're gonna beat Ronnie. You had that mindset. So I asked uh, Lee, did you think that? So in 83, he didn't. I mean, that was um, his first year as a pro and he lost, I don't know how many, three or four um, contests to Mohammed Makavi. And, you know, he says he, he didn't feel that confident yet, 83. But in 84, when he was at his 245, you know, full uh, full self. He was very confident, and uh, he dominated. Yeah, Ronnie. I don't know if you listen to that. Ronnie didn't believe he's going to win ninety eight or ninety nine. You know, he he just didn't see it. <laughs> well, it was a it was good. It was a cool show. Just be able to see this in person, not realizing that mm -hmm. nobody else saw this. They just saw what Samson was streaming. So, yeah. the fact that we actually yeah. got some good footage and you got to see what we saw i'm actually kind of bummed out because uh, i made some uh, comments just from what i saw and i i regret making them yeah but uh that's what we're going to lead this podcast yeah off. but mo mo has regrets yeah mo <laughs> most of us you know if you ha have to judge by, by just what you see and footage is horrible what are you going to do yeah so being there in person matters yeah it does i said 88 uh, chris Cormier and myself we watched lee haney 88 in LA, he looked like absolute freak. No pictures, no video would do him justice, not even close. And I remember that from 1988. And now, many times we go and say it's not the same, but uh, how much different would it be? Now I see with this footage. Yeah. But even the, uh, Andrew Jack from the front looks even better here than uh, what I thought. So from the front, he was conditioned, not crazy conditioned. Uh, what would you think he needs to uh, focus on for the Olympia? Just to get crazy condition, even losing a couple of pounds? Or try to, uh, you know? Yeah, I think he can actually get fuller and leaner at the same time. And I think more fullness is going to make him look even more conditioned in a sense. He still needs to definitely figure out how to get that back a little tighter. You know, so if George is training him and Flex is giving him eyes and you know, he's got a lot of good things in his corner right now, and we haven't really seen a specimen like this, you know, with the height and the, the detail. And, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we talk about Tony Freeman, who was a phenomenal body blur. I just feel Andrew has a few more tie-ins that kind of pop a little more, especially with the midsection and, you know, when he stands there, and we wouldn't really see that in this video. Uh, he's just very dominant in the standing there pose. Uh which, you know, is going to give him a huge advantage. I mean, when you take up that space and you have the symmetry and the structure, you know, it goes a long way. And, and bodybuilding, I feel, still should be judged on that. And it's not just a glute contest or whatever else. But unfortunately, when you're, when you're up on stage and the ju judges have to make the call, if all those guys that we talk about between the walkers and hotties and Ramis and everyone else has a lot of lower body detail and the back detail, it's going to be hard to put him in the middle of these kind of guys because they're great bodybuilders, right? They're all there for structure and size and condition. It doesn't, you know, when you're at the Olympia, it means a huge difference. You have to come prepared. And remember, Steve Weinberger is going to be head judging that. Yeah. And we, we know he's a condition guy. So he's going to favor the people that have better conditioning you can only give so much for this shape and structure. And like Matt says, like in these kind of shows where you're battling guys that, you know, they're not of the caliber of the hotties and whatever else with the maturity. I mean, a lot of these guys are still inexperienced. You're talking about Martin, who hasn't done that many shows. James, who hasn't really figured out like his total peak yet. We're talking about Patrick, who we've never seen before necessarily. 
Um, you know, this Mark Hector, who's, you know, who's been on and off for a couple. I mean, he definitely was off in this, but he's a guy that I could see him qualifying for the Olympia yeah. too. He has the structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a few other guys also, but like, it's just going to come down to when would they stand next to each other? We can sit there and hype and look at, you know, how the guy is going to do our predictions, but predictions aren't shit until you stand those bodies next to each other and they go through those transitions. Remember, quarter turns mean a lot too. Even though they don't necessarily, I mean, that's kind of the confirmation, right? But uh, I feel like, you know, when they do those quarter turns and someone has that, that structure and stands there, and like you said, Andrew just needs a sh- little more tad conditioning, um, but I still think he can improve on fullness, which is wild. Yeah, his chest is ridiculous full if you see him in, in yeah. person. I mean... Uh, that time when he took a shirt off in front of Steve Weinberger, he didn't pump up or anything. I saw him coming in. I say, hey, please, uh, you know, come in. I was blown away. I mean, chest was like sticking out, like you r- literally pump with the air. And he's super inexperienced. Milos, yeah, you know, he could really, you know, if he worked with a little more posing, which it's unfortunate that he's spending half the time in the Middle East and. Yeah you know, not here or whatever else that he could li- literally work with Flex and Flex could just drill him to death in the posing room. He was. Uh, I, I was in the posing room a couple of times. I, I don't want to say that Andrew got all the points that, uh, you know, Flex was saying. You, you can say turn, do this and that, and uh, they do it to best their ability, but they don't look good. They don't look comfortable. When you hit the pose, you have to first feel comfortable and then adjust the angles, right? And then all the other muscles. Uh, front poses, I think, are uh, phenomenal. His frontal biceps, a uh, lot spread. Some people complain that he's leaning too much back, but I think depth of the abs, that he has small waist and legs going all over, it looks phenomenal. Ab shot looks phenomenal. Most muscular looks phenomenal. So now many people complain side chest, side triceps. You wonder if, uh, you know, putting the yeah. elbow all the way back. He covers more space. Yeah. That's what I was doing with the... Uh, Ronnie and Kevin, whatever, 99, 99. Um, you were showing the midsection too, right? I would show the midsection, but yeah. I, I would, if you look at me from the side, I'm just like this. But if I turn more, now I'm this, this yeah, way. Yeah, you had full pecs though too. It's yeah. <coughs> yeah, but uh, for but him. Even, but even at that, when you're saying he's turning, but you can still turn and keep that elbow in, but he's putting it out. He's yeah, got longer uh, arms, you know. Yeah. Uh, arm looks good. Yeah. Arm looks good. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just curious. I'm yeah. not criticizing. And him. then, uh, like Robbie Robinson and Sean Ray, they would show intercostals in the side chest pose and bring us more detail. Uh, I think uh, really it's going to be pose by pose. If he brings conditioning from the back and right uh, there side, right. side poses look, you know, the best that he can do, which is uh, angles a little bit, <sighs> we see him second, right? You see him uh, as You both expect second. him to be in the first call out? I do. Oh, for sure. I do, yeah. I said today to, to Dennis, even like this, he would be in the first call out. He, he I disagree. did. I, I'd be disappointed if he's not finishing in the top six, to be honest. Yeah. I think he can land that the first tr- trip to the Olympia. So every little bit more that he gets more detailed, he's just going to potentially, could potentially move up. Yes. You already judge structure is phenomenal, shape is phenomenal, width is phenomenal, front pose is a phenomenal. Side poses are good. Back poses, yeah, because of hamstring, we didn't, uh, you know, rave about him. And still, he still need more detail and thickness, and you know, to be next to the Brandon Curry, who has a crazy back, right? To uh, Heidi Chupan and uh, I mean Labrada and uh, Nick Walker, yeah. and then William Bonya has a crazy back. Yeah. Back of the special. And we saw a picture of him yesterday. Yeah, he looks really good. Ridiculous. ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. Hey, what what's going on with Crizo, guys? He is doing the Italy show. When is that? Yeah, Amateur two weeks from now. Okay. Amateur Olympia, right? Yeah, I, I mean, whatever it is, yeah, uh, yeah there's uh, two weeks from now or 10 days from now. And so then we're not going to see him make a run to try to get any qualification for the Olympia. Yeah, he, oh, he's going to. Prague. No, no, I think the, no, he's going to do the amateur one day and uh, pro next day. Okay. Can you? Yeah. 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 I thought it's the next can year. No, no, no. So even even uh, pro, you can do the show. What the about same this day? good veto guy? Uh, I've seen the picture today. Uh, he looks like a freak. Is he? Is he? Is he pro yet? No. Okay. Well, he, not in our league, is he? Yeah, not yet. Yeah. yeah. There's some. There's some. There's some talent coming up. I'm telling you, yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, Vito, what, what is his name? It's good. I good don't know. Vito. Good Vito. Instagram. Know. It's good Vito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
he looks like a X frame freak with the legs like Rami and uh, yeah, good he's arms. Got crazy legs, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be super dangerous. Um, Crisa, yeah, going to uh, Italy for sure because I have a my uh, athlete Mohamed Alamam is competing. And he says, oh, how about Kriza? I said, well, it's going to be a <laughs> big competition for sure. Yeah. yeah. This year's Olympia is going to be exciting. Yeah. Man. We want to shout out to Celsius too, guys. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for all your uh, support. And, uh, you know, you guys want to comment what you guys think. I know we, we favor towards uh, certain people in this contest, but we love your opinions on it too. So yeah. we, we want to thank you for coming on. What else do you want to say? Yeah, uh, if you're a judge for a second, third, fourth, what would you do now that you seen it live and seen the video I, I footage? Agree. I, would, I agree. I mean, exactly. people, people thought James could have been second um, versus third. Um, I, I agreed with it pretty much. I mean, I, I didn't. I understood where people placed, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, look, it, it, it was obvious Andrew was going to win. But <clears throat> like I said, some of the other guys, I, I, yeah. they held their own in a lot of different yeah. poses that exposed him, which is good yeah. for him because – Going into the Olympia, if if someone like a Martin beats you from the back, what the hell do you think Hottie's going to do? What do you think Rami's going to do? What do you think William Bonak's going to do? He It, it was Walker. good for him. Nick Walker. These guys are crazy from the back. Yeah. Nick's back double is insane. Yeah. So it was good for him to stand next to some of these guys again. And now if he does his homework, where he places now is up to... Yeah, well, listen, we talk about these top six from last year, and I think we are all in agreement that... I think the top three is going to be the same. That's what we were thinking until we seen uh, Andrew. So no, I, I still think I still think uh, Brandon brings it. I think Rami. I think Hadi brings it. I think Most that's likely, yeah. okay. So Brandon, uh, even saw it, as good talking. as good as last year when he played second, he was a point behind, right? Uh, him and uh, Andrew Jack pose by pose. I do listen, but Brandon's got some dude. He's got the density from the side and. Like the front lat spread is still good for front, him. The yeah. front double, like he's got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> like I can't, dude, the guy's Mister Olympia. Like yeah. till I, I can't discredit Brandon. Like yeah. I, I really can't yeah. because I think he'll have a hard time with Brandon. Yeah, I mean his shape is most wonderful. Yeah. Legs uh, underdeveloped, and conditioning was never a stellar. Like oh my god, for for me, I think it is always like oh. Brandon can be so much better. But listen, condition. he's forty. I mean, it's it's like it's mm-hmm. definitely not the beginning. Uh, like till we stand them next to each other, we'll have to see how it how yeah. it pans out. But I'm not going to give up on Brandon yet because no. yeah, for me, Brandon was my favorite shape out of all people of the Olympia, and now with uh, Andrew coming in, I would like to see them next to each other. And uh, yeah. Andrew, I'm can sure they'll get next him. to each other. Hmm? I'm sure they will. They will be, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I also count on the Samson, you know, being right Samson's there. A, he's going to be the one. Everyone keeps part. talking about Samson. And Samson right? being uh, next to Brandon and uh, Andrew. Andrew. Jack, yeah. yeah, I would like to see them. Uh, Samson improved bigger and in crazy conditions. So. He's going to be bigger than he was at the Arnold. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's way bigger. Uh, you saw him in person. Yeah, he, but he was in like a 5X t shirt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you can tell. Yeah, he's, uh, a, he's a big boy. You could tell. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, dude, and, uh, you know, keep doing what you do. I know you're busy today, so. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Until yeah. next time. Uh, we love when you'll be able to uh, to give your opinions because our, our viewers and our listeners love to, to, uh, yeah. to chime I'm in. I'm just so. like a little in shock because I really made up my mind uh, what I saw in these other videos, and now as uh, you presented this 4K footage, like, oh, shit, it's completely <laughs> different. Well, you have a front row seat at the yeah. Olympia, hopefully, so. Yeah. Yeah, can you get me a front row seat? Yeah, man, talk to Slim. He's he's the man. Yeah, right yeah. yeah. Front row seat, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out. Thanks. Uh.